Hey gang, so if you've been following along, you know that I am back from my 51 day, 12,000 mile trip up to Alaska and back home here to Boston, Massachusetts, or in the Boston area anyway. And I've been doing these debriefs. We've talked about how the motorcycle did, we talked about how I did, and now what I wanna do is cover how my gear did on this trip. And I know that a lot of you want to know how my Aerostitch Darien jacket did because I purchased this just before I, you know, decided to go on this trip. Or at least I purchased it over the winter knowing that I was going to be going on this trip. I have about, I don't know, probably 15,000 miles on this jacket now. It's broken in pretty good. When I first got it, it was kind of stiff, but now it's nice and loose and comfortable. And I have to say that overall, the jacket did great, right? It protected me from the bugs and from the rain. Uh, it did not leak at all on this trip. So, Overall, said I am really, really pleased with this jacket. So before we continue with this video, there's something I need to bring to your attention. And that is that the good folks at Aerostitch are offering a discount. That is, you can go to their website, place an order, and use the code LOTS, L-O-T-S, at checkout and get free ground shipping. And that is from now, the time I release this video, until September 1st, 2024. So also, if you're a new Aerostitch customer, you can call them up at this number, that is 800-222-1994, and if you place your order through them, you'll get 10% off your order. That is, all new Aerostitch customers get 10% off their order, Again, give them a call at 800-222-1994, right? And let them know that you heard about it, right, on Living Off the Slab. Back to the video. Uh, there are a lot of things I really like about it over my climb jackets, again, which are also very good products. I use them for years. I continue to have some climb products and will continue to use them. But there are things about this jacket that I like a little bit better. All right, one is uh, this collar up here. All right, this collar is much higher, so it works really well in the rain to keep that water out and keep you warm. Because when I was riding most of the time in the rain, right, it was like 50 degrees and raining, so I needed to stay warm as well as try to stay dry. And this higher collar up here really did the trick. Now you can also, of course, fold that collar down very easily. Right? If you just uh, unzip the jacket a little bit, you can fold that down really easily and again, make it a lot cooler for you. So we'll go over that here in a minute though. Um, another thing that I really like about this jacket is I love the way that the sleeves work. All right, on my climb jackets, again, I've talked about this in the past, the sleeves are a little bit small, so if you have a glove that you're you know, trying to get that sleeve over, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Then yes, I know that you could use gauntlet gloves, but have you tried to find a gauntlet glove here lately that will actually go over a jacket? It's, it's hard. A lot of them that are available right, will not go over a jacket, at least that's what I have found. The big thing about this uh, sleeve, the way it is, it has this zipper here so that I can, you know, close it or open it up, right, to any amount that I wish. And then on top of that, it has, of course, this Velcro closure, again, that allows me to customize the fit. So I can get it really tight or I can loosen it up. And again, we'll talk about riding in the heat here in a minute, but being able to open those sleeves up and let air in, well, that's a real big plus. So let's talk a little bit more about this jacket keeping me dry. Because the truth is that whether you get an Aero Stitch product or whether you buy a Climb or a Revit or any of these products that use the gore membranes, all right, eventually, if it rains hard enough and long enough, right, the fabric here is gonna get overwhelmed and 
right? You're gonna get some buildup of sweat and so forth on the inside of your jacket, right? Um, I really haven't had much problem with water leaking directly through either of my jackets, right? Mostly it's that you get a buildup of sweat, just like you're wearing, you know, a rain suit, right? You, it, might, it might keep you dry from the, the rain, but uh, you sweat on the inside and you get soaked anyway. So, right, what's the difference? All right, well, these kind of things are the same way if the outer fabric starts to get overwhelmed. Right? And for me, what I have found, again, with the arrow stitch or with the climb, it's both the same thing. When I ro rode to Alaska last time, I had my climb jacket on and I found the same issues. That uh, down near the cuffs, right, water starts to soak in there, right, and so it's gonna get wet there. Down near the bottom of the jacket, also, it tends to get wet. And then also along the front here where the zipper is. Because the zipper you know, on this jacket right, is not waterproof, right? And again, that's the same for the arrow stitch here, the Darien jacket, as well as for my climb jacket. That front zipper is not waterproof. They try to keep water out by having this gutter system right that folds over the top of it and for the most part it works very well but as i said if you're in rain that is just hard enough and it's pounding down on your chest for long enough this gutter will start to get damp right and while i never got any real water seepage through it you could feel that it was getting cool because again this outer gutter and then this inner gutter started to absorb water right and you could feel that coolness along the front of your chest. Now here's the, the climb jacket here that I wore last time that I went to Alaska. And Peter and Stephen actually, all we all had the same climb latitude jackets on. And what we found with these is that while climb has a similar gutter system here, they don't have a whole lot of Velcro that holds this outer flap shut. And again, I find it on this model as well as my new model. So you have to be very diligent about shutting this outer flap. So Peter was having trouble on our last trip that he couldn't get this flap to stay shut. So he was actually getting some leakage, some seepage in through his zipper. I didn't have that problem, but you do have to be diligent to make sure that that gets closed all the way. Also, you have these little zipper pulls. <laughs> If they get caught underneath there like that, well, water can get in that way too. So again, you've got to be diligent about how you close these. Again, whether it's a climb, whether it's the arrow stitch, that is true. And what I like about the arrow stitch over the climb in that regard is that the outer flap as well as the inner gutter is much larger than the climbs. And there's a lot more Velcro to keep this closed. Again, which for me, is really a good thing. Now, you do have to be diligent, as I just mentioned, on how you close this thing, right? If you just let this flap come over here, well, you're not gonna be able to get the Velcro closed. So while you're stitching up your jacket, you gotta make sure that that gutter stays open and then you get all of the Velcro fastened, right? Again, it's the same kind of process with both of the jackets, right? You Again, just have to be aware of how you get all of that stuff closed. Another thing I like about the Darien in the rain is that it is a much longer jacket than the climb. All right, so the Darien goes down not quite mid-thigh, but it goes down farther. Andy Goldfine designed this so it would fit like a suit coat. He said it would cover a suit coat up. Now, for some people that may be a little bit long. For me, I like it because it covers up my back, right? And one of the problems with some of my other jackets is they're a little short and they let cold air and so forth come up underneath the rear of that jacket. This one helps protect me from that. So in the front, right, it can be a little bit long, right, depending upon the bike and how you're sitting and so forth, especially. But what I can do is just roll that front up a little bit and then leave the back long, right? And then it really helps to protect me and lets the rain kind of run off the jacket. So I found that to be a big plus. So now let's talk about riding in colder temperatures. 
because for me, on most of this trip, while I was riding up through Canada, up into Alaska, and back home again, most of the trip, it was in the 50s. Right? I would get up in the morning and it would actually be in the 40s. It would be a little rainy oftentimes, and then it might warm up into the 50s and maybe the 60s by the end of the day, depending upon whether the clouds went away or not. But it was cold a lot of the time. So this Darien jacket is an unlined jacket, as I discussed in um, one of my other review videos on this, right? There's no inner lining, you just have the outer Cordura shell and then you have, right, your Gore-Tex membrane, right, uh, up against your skin. And that has its pros and cons. It makes the jacket a little bit lighter as we're going to talk about here for riding in the heat, it does make the jacket a little bit cooler than a line jacket. But for riding in colder temperatures, it makes it a little cooler. So you're going to need to have layers underneath this if you're going to be riding in cooler temperatures like that. Again, I'll cover the layers that I have um, that I took with me and what I used here in a second, but just know that this is just an outer shell, right? And again, designed to be used with multiple layers, right? So you want to order this thing with enough room in it so that, you know, you can put those layers underneath. Um, I have a 46 inch chest, so I got a 46 regular and it works perfectly uh, for me. I can get a couple layers underneath there very comfortably. So again, that's a big plus. Um, my, my climbs in the same size tend to be a little bit tight, right? So um, I can still get layers underneath there, but it's a little bit tighter. This one gives me plenty of room to play with. So as I just said, because this is an online jacket, I think that it makes it a little nicer for riding in hot temperatures. I, I don't take my jacket off when I ride in hot temperatures. Right? I keep it on, I wanna keep my skin covered, I do not want the sun beating down on my skin and, and burning it, right? That is not good, right? That doesn't make you cooler, that doesn't keep you hydrated, that actually can lead to heat exhaustion, right? So you don't wanna do that. Right? I, I remember on this one trip, I pulled over to get some gas uh, at one point, and it was hot, it was like 105 degrees, I, and as I came back outside, I saw this one guy who was, you know, on his bike and he had the typical leather vest on, little half helmet, and that's all he was wearing. He was, you know, bare chested underneath, his uh, arms were sticking out and so forth. And the guy was beet red. I mean, he looked like he was going to be hurting big time. So it may be, or you may think that it's a little cooler <laughs> while you're riding, right? But you're gonna pay for it in the long run if you don't keep your skin covered. Now, as far as ventilation on this jacket goes, um, it has pit vents on the side right here. These big pit vents on both sides. Uh, it has a exhaust port on the back that's really large and you can customize it to your needs. Right, and then you can open up the front of the jacket like this and roll this collar down like so. And there are actually magnets that you can put in the jacket and pin that collar back like so. And then that lets air in that way. And again, you can go up or down and let air in to your liking. Right? And um, I found that to work really well for me. Now, as I mentioned previously, you can also open these sleeves up, right, and let air in through the sleeves that way. And uh, I found that to be really effective as well. That's kind of a technique that I learned from uh, the folks at LD Comfort, the base layers that I use, right? They have a, a technique where you can actually wet the sleeves of your LD Comfort long sleeve garment and then open up the sleeves a little bit, let air flow through there, and it kind of turns 
your jacket into a little air conditioned environment, right? It's like, like, it's like using a swamp cooler, right? So um, I found that to be very effective on this jacket, even without needing to soak the sleeves. The, the jacket allowed me in the hot temperatures to get a little bit of sweat on my skin. And then as I was moving, then the air comes and it flows through the front of the jacket and into those sleeves. And it really makes for a nice, cool environment in there. Like I said, I was never overly hot while I was moving. And that's even in temperatures that were at the 105 and 100, and I think seven or eight was the highest I saw uh, while I was on this trip. But uh, I was very comfortable the entire time. Um, I said, I don't mind the heat so much. I know a lot of other people don't like it, but um, for me, as long as I can keep that air flowing in the jacket, I, then I'm absolutely fine. And then I just stay hydrated. You know, I drink water constantly, you know, using my hydration pack. So for me, the jacket works great, right? In temperatures down, well, I, I even had some 30 degree temperatures that I rode in on this trip. Uh, again, I had to have some layers on for that. Uh, but it also worked great in the hotter temps. So I'm really pleased with it as far as the flexibility of this jacket. Now let's talk about a couple of cons, I guess, to this jacket. When I bought the high-vis color here, people warned me of two things. They said, it's gonna fade and it's gonna get really dirty. I'm like, okay, well, you know, getting dirty doesn't really bother me. I, I've got a gray jacket, it gets dirty as well. And again, I really don't care. <laughs> but I have to tell you, this one got pretty darn dingy. <laughs> Here, let me show you some pictures of how dirty this thing was before I cleaned it. So it's amazing to me just how much dirt and gunk we get hit with while we're riding, right? And you don't really know it. If you've got a black jacket, you're never gonna see it. But if, like me, you have this lighter color jacket or you have this white beard, because every night I would have this black line right across my my beard right from all of the junk that would hit me you know as my beard was coming out underneath my helmet right and I'll, same with this jacket the chest part of the jacket and the sleeves were just covered with gunk by the time i got home so i had to uh <laughs> to very diligently clean this thing off but it cleaned up pretty good now how i cleaned this was i got myself some OxyClean. I had this and I bought a gel that I used right? and I worked it all into all of the areas that were just really dirty, right? which was most of the jacket, quite honestly. Um, and then I let that soak for a while and then of course I washed it and most everything came out. I may have to reapply to some areas on the jacket, but mostly it came clean. Um, now, when you do that, uh, be aware that scrubbing the jacket like that and getting all the dirt off is going to remove, right, or at least denature, right, the waterproof coating that is on the outside of the jacket. Right? All of these Gore-Tex jackets, they work not only with the membrane that's on the inside, but also there's a waterproof coating that you need to reapply especially right, if you're washing it and then scrubbing it like I did, right? Normal detergents will also degrade that coating. So it needs to be reapplied periodically, at least probably once, maybe twice a year. Again, depending upon how much you use the jacket and how often you're washing it. All right, so um, my climb jackets worked for about three or four years um, with never reapplying it. And then after that, um, I started getting some, you know, not seepage, but again, the jacket no longer would breathe properly. So I was getting some buildup of condensation and sweat and so forth on the inside of the jacket. So you definitely need to reapply. And also let me warn you of one thing, because I have made this mistake, that if you wash your jacket, even if you reapply, the uh, the waterproofing by just letting it air dry well that doesn't really do the trick you need to throw it in the dryer right and dry it on a medium setting for 
you know, 20 minutes or so, right? Again, to re establish that waterproof coating. So again, make sure you do that every time that you uh, wash the jacket. Whether you're reapplying it or not, throw it in the dryer and make sure that you can reinitialize that uh, waterproof coating. Now, as far as the waterproof coating and reapplying it, there's two kinds that uh, AeroStitch at least recommends. There's the Revive here. This is the product that Climb also recommends. But Andy Goldfine says you could also use this from Nick Wax. All right, so that's actually what I use when I reapplied it on this jacket. This little uh, pump bottle will do about one application on the jacket. So you're gonna need to buy this well, every time that you wash it or reapply the product. Or what I did was I went out to Amazon and I found this big bottle of it. And in fact, I bought two of these and then I can just refill my squirt bottle. All right, so now at least what I'm gonna do is every time I wash the jacket, because I'm probably gonna be scrubbing it after I do that, I'm gonna reapply the Nick Wax coating. Now one other con that I do have to tell you about just because I have to be honest with you is that I have a couple of small seams that have come undone and I'm gonna be sending this jacket back to AeroStitch. I've already contacted them and they're gonna fix it for me, of course, under warranty. Um, but right here on the, uh, the left sleeve, said the cuff seam is coming undone so I have to have that fixed. And then up here, there's a pocket to rest your hands in, and I've got a seam there that's coming undone as well. Um, again, minor stuff. It doesn't infect the integrity of the jacket or anything, but again, I'm gonna have to have those fixed. And again, I've reached out to AeroStitch, and uh, so far it's been a pretty seamless process. I'll just be boxing it up and sending it back to them, and they'll repair it for me. While I was on this trip, I stopped in the AeroStitch store and the AeroStitch, uh, I guess, factory there in Duluth. And I got to have a tour of the place, as well as I got to spend some time talking with the owner and founder, Andy Goldfine. And while we were talking, he started asking me about the kind of gear that I was bringing, you know, on top of my, my Darien jacket. And I told him I had these different layers and so forth. He says, well, look, I got some things that uh, I want you to have and I want you to try out because I think these are going to make your life a lot easier. So this jacket is actually made to be an inner lining right this is you would wear on the inside of your jacket and it also is waterproof and it's a gore windstop fabric right again made by aerostitch right there in their duluth factory all right so i have to stop this video again because i need to make a little bit of a clarification because as i was going through this video i was throwing around the term gore and gore-tex right and i realized that i was kind of using that like we often use the term kleenex right that is actually a brand name but we use it now to apply to all you know bathroom <laughs> tissues right so I was using Gore-Tex in the same kind of vein, and that is absolutely not true. See, some of the AeroStitch products, that is the older products, use Gore-Tex. That was the original Gore-Tex formulation that was made, well, about 30 years ago now. Today, there are a lot of other companies who use that original formulation to make similar, right, waterproof membranes, right? And AeroStitch is now using something called TL-Tex, which again is the exact same formulation that Gore started off with 30 years ago and that AeroStitch has used since day one. So you can rest assured that whether it's Gore-Tex or actually TL-Tex, right, the functionality of the product and the durability of product is exactly the same. What this does is it helps us stop some of that cold wind, right, that like I was explaining, the Darien jacket, it's a little lighter jacket, right, doesn't have that inner lining, so you're going to feel some of that wind coming through it, again, which is good when it's hot, but not so good when it's cold. So when it got down in the 50s, right, and even in the 60s, right, I would wear this, right, underneath the jacket, and it would help stop some of that 
coolness, right, that you feel from the wind. And it worked really, really well. Now, also when it was raining out, I would put this underneath. And while I wasn't getting any water through the jacket, as I mentioned, you could feel that as it got damp, that, that zipper area, right? And that prevented all of that. It also prevented any uh, dampness that I got in the sleeves, which I didn't get that much for another reason that I'm gonna tell you here in a second, but also down near the bottom of the jacket as well. So that really, this extra layer just made it a lot, lot more comfortable. Now I believe that this retails for like $130 um, and a comparable product out on the Climb website, like I have another Climb Windstop jacket that I purchased and it was like $250, right? Really nice jacket, it has a zipper in the front, but this, for a lot less money, I think did a better job when I wear it underneath my Darien jacket. As far as size goes, I got an extra large here, and it fits me well and allows me to get another layer underneath it. So, And the layer that I wore underneath it was this. This is a, a Patagonia, you know, synthetic down jacket, one of those little puffy jackets, right, that worked really well to keep me nice and warm. And most of the time, this is what I would wear while I was traveling. So I would wear this as my insulated layer. I would put that wind stop layer over the top of it and then the Darien jacket, All right? And again, when I was riding and it was raining and 50 degrees out, this kept me nice and comfortable. I was very pleased on how this turned out. Now, I know the Patagonias are a little expensive and you don't have to go out and get one of those. It's just what I had. Aerostitch makes some insulated jackets. You can check those out as well as there's tons of them, you know, that you can find all over the place. Now, I did have a heated layer with me as well, and I did use it on a few occasions, again, when those temperatures got down into the 40s. But most of the time, I didn't need to plug that in. I, I just needed to use this and throw that wind stop layer over the top of it and it worked great. Now for riding pants, I did not use the Aerostitch uh, pants, not because I don't like them, just because I already had these, right? So I didn't see why I should purchase <laughs> another set of pants, right? These are the Climb Badlands Pro and these worked awesome. Again, Gore-Tex lined, uh, really, really great pant uh, and again works real well for me. Now let's talk about gloves because I was a little bit disappointed in the gloves that I brought along on this trip and those were these. These are the Climb uh, Vanguard gloves and I've been using the Vanguard gloves for a number of years. I, I had an older set that uh, again last year I got caught in a torrential storm and it soaked through, right? So I returned them to Climb and Climb replaced them with the new version of the Vanguard glove, which I think are really nice. They're comfortable, well-made gloves. The problem with them was that after about an hour, they soaked through. And I had that happen to me several times on this trip. I decided I didn't want to use some glove covers that I have. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. You know, because I didn't think it was gonna be a really heavy rain. So I thought, well, I'll just go with my Gore-Tex gloves, you know, at least for now. And then about an hour into it, well, these things were soaked, right? Soaked through. So I really disappointed in these because this is a brand new set of gloves, right? I got these uh, last fall, right? So, so probably right about a year ago now, a little less than a year maybe, um, as a replacement for my last ones. And again, just I'm very disappointed in these things. So I'm gonna have to let Climb know. Climb if you're watching. Again, I don't know what's going on, but uh, again, they just, just didn't do the job. All right, so next I brought these, and this is a Climb uh, Adventure Glove. All right, and again, Gore-Tex lined. So you would think that they would be waterproof. Again, brand new glove, right? I really haven't used them maybe a couple of times since I bought them. So this was my first real big trip with them. 
And while they did better than the Vanguard gloves, again, after, you know, two hours or so, I was starting to feel wetness on the inside of these as well. I said, not as bad as the Vanguard's, but again, I was still getting some water coming through. So again, for a fairly expensive gloves here, I, again, I wasn't very impressed. Now the gloves I was impressed with are these, right? These are not a waterproof glove. This is the AeroStitch Deer Skin gloves, right? And again, Andy gave these to me, wanted me to try them uh, while I was at AeroStitch. And so I did, and I have to say, I love these things. These are so comfortable, right? Um, they're fantastic. And I know they're gonna get all dirty and yucky looking, and that's fine. That's the way they're supposed to be. Uh, but these are just really, really comfortable gloves. I just absolutely love them so far. Um, what I have found um, over the last few years in particular, maybe because I'm getting older, but wearing a big heavy glove like this with the knuckle protection and everything in it, um, my hands hurt, right? Especially my index finger and my thumb, right, over you know, a few hours will start to go numb and ache on me. And I think that what the problem is, is that the glove has so much protection and so forth on it. And it also has that, you know, recurve in it, right? These are that, or the pre-curve, I should say, uh, where it, you know, makes your hand like it goes over the throttle. But the problem is that because of that, you never can really stretch your hands out fully, right? There's always that little, you know, resistance to being able to do that. And it causes my thumb and my index finger to hurt because I cannot stretch those out and, and get them comfortable. So what I have found is that wearing a, a lighter glove, something that allows me to move my hand fully allows me to be much more comfortable while I'm riding. And yeah, I know I'm probably giving up a little bit of protection. I mean, the leather does really well for sliding, so I'm not worried about that, but I do not have the real, you know, hard knuckles and so forth. But again, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never actually needed that. So um, I, I'm really loving these gloves, right? Because of that fact, right? They're so comfortable and so soft and they allow me to just spread my hands out and get them, you know, to relax, right? Where I can't really do that on those pre-curved gloves. Again, so I'm really liking riding with these things. AeroStitch Deerskin, great gloves. Now the last glove that I want to talk about are these, what I call the lobster claws. Again, Andy gave these to me while um, I was at AeroStitch. Right? He said, look, you need some of these to help keep you dry. You're gonna run into a lot of water. And of course, he was right. And I knew that I would. All right, so these uh, aren't the lobster claws on their website. They are actually the triple digit glove or the glove cover. And they do come in this orange color and they also come in in black. So if you don't like the orange, you can get them in black. Uh, but this uh, just was an absolute lifesaver on this trip because, as I said, my other Gore-Tex gloves weren't working very well, right? and they bothered my hand, especially those uh, adventure gloves. So I could take that deerskin glove and put those on and then put these on over the top of it and still be comfortable and this is a, a ripstop nylon so no wind comes through or very little wind comes through uh, and no rain comes through either so this is great and they come up so high here that they kept all the the cuff and the forearms nice and dry as well again these are fantastic they will be included in my kit from now on <laughs> Right, just great gloves. So those two things that Andy, well, three things actually that Andy gave me, the inner layer, that Gore-Tex windstop layer, awesome. These gloves, again, awesome. And those deerskin gloves, all of those are just absolutely fantastic. And again, I'm gonna keep using those from now on. 
All right, gang, I think that's it for all of my gear. Um, I think the last thing that I'll do as far as these debrief goes is we'll talk a little bit about how I, I shot my footage um, on this trip, how I approached it. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm not going to, uh, to cover anything else unless you guys have questions and so forth. And again, then I'll try to answer those for you. Uh, if you do have questions about any of this gear, again, let me know. And uh, again, I'll answer them as best I can in the comments. So, all right, guys, thank you. I'm going to be working on uh, all of uh, the footage. I've got a lot of it to go through. I've uh, got about, well, 40 minutes finished so far, <laughs> but I've got a long way to go. So, all right. Thanks a lot for watching and keep squeezing your lemon.